This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. There is no reconciliation without equality. You said amen when I showed you that with you and Jesus. Now I'm telling you that where we live at. There is not no reconciliation without equality. We have to reconcile our society with what, with what is written on paper. I ain't asking for no new laws. I'm just asking that you equally enforce the ones you wrote down. Trinidad and Tobago, the 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. God is about to open some doors that no man will be able to close. God is about to set some stuff up that nobody could set up. God is about to give you favor that nobody could give favor to. The, the messages is just fully loaded with truth that our generation and our society needs today. Register now for this free event by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. Philippians chapter 2 and 6, follow me carefully. Verse 6 says, well, let me, let me read verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Huh. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus, the great equalizer. Now, now watch what I'm saying here. We could not be reconciled to God. There could be no harmony between man and God. There was no compatibil compat compatibility between man and God until, first of all, equality was established. You could never have reconciliation until you had equality. But once equality was established, reconciliation between God and man was possible. Oh, y'all don't hear me. As much as God loved you because of sin, reconciliation was not possible without Jesus, the great equalizer. But because of Jesus, we now all stand on equal ground because the great equalizer has shown up. You ready? For all of my ministry, I have believed that the, I believed, and even what Brother Copeland and I were talking about years ago, I went around the country and I was preaching reconciliation amongst blacks and whites. I had meetings where I had blacks to come up who were in strife and whites that came up who were in strikes, strife and they hated one another. And I had them to address their inferiority and their superiority. And they hugged and they cried and they forgave one another. And I thought, man, we hit it. And lo and behold, that old ugly devil of racism stuck his head up again. Listen to me carefully. I believe that the first step, I thought the first step towards good relationships between blacks, whites, American Indians, Native Americans, I thought the first step was reconciliation. I have since grown and matured and have experienced enough in my life to know that the first step towards a good relationship between different ethnic groups, between blacks and whites, 
and, and, and Hispanics, I, I now understand that the first step is not reconciliation, but it must be equality. For the last six months, you've heard Black Lives Matter. But the question needs to be now, are black lives equal? Matter, are they equal? Native Americans, their lives matter, but are they equal? The issue is not what matters. And then people tell them, well, all lives matter. That's just like saying, you know, all, all, all houses in a neighborhood matter except mine is on fire. <laughs> it's not the time to be talking about all lives matter when the one that's on fire is the one that matters right now. Listen to me carefully. I felt some of y'all cringed up. It's going to be all right. I ain't mad at nobody. <laughs> I ain't mad at nobody. I'm not a racist. I got white grandkids. I got a white son. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in there with you. I mean, if you come talking that stuff in my house, you know, I'm going to have to hurt you because, you know, I'm just trying to show you that equality has got to be first before reconciliation because if you go at reconciliation and then you ignore equality, you're just going to go back in a circle again. So we all right. I'm your brother. I still come to your house and have a lollipop with you. But I'm going to show you why the body of Christ can't afford to be quiet. And ignore it. Well, I just ain't going to say nothing, and I'm going to wait till it all pass over, and, and I'm just going to keep my mouth closed, and then, you know, it, and then I'm, I'm just going to act like ain't nothing happening. It's equality. Philippians chapter 2, 6, you saw what Jesus did there in order for us to be reconciled with God. Look at Galatians chapter 3 and 28, because we're Christians. I say, I say, we're Christians. Yeah. Well, you know what you are. Galatians 3, 28, he said, there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. He said, all y'all are one in Christ. So Christ, the great equalizer, says that no matter what color your skin is, you stand equal. We all stand on equal grounds in Christ. The day you got born again, you stand on equal grounds with Christ. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 17, 26. Oh, yes, we do. But we got we to gotta confront that little demon that want to crop up from bad teaching that we've heard in times past. And, and please let me make myself clear. Racism doesn't just exist with white folks. Because I've heard about black people who came and sat in church and you sit them right next, right next door to a Hispanic and like, I don't want to sit next to no Hispanic. I want to sit to somebody, we sit with somebody that's black. black. No, ra racism is a spirit. Racism, unlike some of us, racism doesn't care what color you are if it can operate through you to cause division, it will. <laughs> Acts chapter 26, he says, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. One blood. He has made, he's made everybody in here with one blood. So God is making it very clear 
that like all other people, we are equal in every aspect. <clears throat> let, let, let me first of all, you know what the big lie is? You know what the big lie is in the world? And I don't think we realize? The big lie is race. Yes. The big lie is that you got four or five races. That's the big lie. Somebody decided to do an experiment one day and say, hey, let's let everybody know that, there, that there, there are four or five races based on the pigmentation of your skin color. Let's let the brown man know he a race. Let the black man know he a race. Let, let the real white guy know he a race. Let, let the uh, other guy who kind of brown, but he got nap hair, let him know he a race. And we'll just tell him, we'll tell them that this race is, is more dominant than that race. And, and, and this race should, 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 you know, should not stand more dominant than the other race. And, and, and let's, let's just do this great experiment and spread this big old lie that there are many races. The truth is, there is not no four or five races. There is one race. It is the human race. We all have been made from the same blood. We're still going around here having a problem because of the, of the paint job of the truck. We still, we got a problem because that truck was painted black and that one over there was painted white and that truck over there was painted purple. And oh, that's a, that, that truck right there, it's black on the top and white at the bottom. And you, it's still a goddamn old truck. <laughs> and there's hate that comes up because I grew up closer to the equator than you did? Are you seriously kidding me? I am a whole nother type of, uh, I'm another species because of the color of my paint job? <laughs> Nothing else God made got a problem with that. You get a black horse, they get with a white horse, they make a horse. You get a black dog, and with a brown dog, they make a dog. A black sheep, with a, with, a, with a brown sheep, they make a sheep, and they know it. <laughs> but you get white folks with some black folks and then some brown ones, and you're talking about you don't know what they are? They are, they are human. They, 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 are, they are still within the species of that one blood. that my intellect is supposed to be lesser than your intellect because of my paint job? And we've been buying that lie for the longest. Well, Brother Dollar, you don't understand. I pastor a, a, a multiracial, diverse, listen, You don't have different color people in your church just so they can sit there and decorate your congregation. <laughs> you, treat, you treat them equally, and so they're not the ones that just sing in the choir. The black guy can also have influence in your leadership. Well, I don't mind them being in the leadership and singing in the choir, but now, nah, 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 nah. how about marrying your daughter? How about, how about marrying your white daughter? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you ought to stick with your own kind. You are human. <laughs> a horse is a horse, a course of course. <laughs> and if one horse get with another horse, regardless of the paint job, they're going to have a horse. If one human gets together with another human, regardless of the paint job, they're going to have another human. But you bought that, that, that race lie and thought there was a whole nother species was created because of the paint job. How 
ignorant is that? There is no reconciliation without equality. You said amen when I showed you that with you and Jesus. Now I'm telling you that where we live at. There is not no reconciliation without equality. We have to reconcile our society with what, with what is written on paper. I ain't asking for no new laws. I'm just asking that you equally enforce the ones you wrote down. There is no reconciliation without equality. First, we must be reconciled as equals, as the equals we are in God's creation along with every other racial and ethnic group. And once we have been recognized as equals, if we have a falling out, then we have a valid basis for reconciliation. Reconciliation has no meaning if it's not aimed at achieving equality in life expectancy, of education, employment, and all of the important and measurable areas of disadvantage. Reconciliation is about creating equity. And equity is about the quality of being fair and impartial. And equality is something that's, that's, that's very important. And equity is very important. And we got to close this gap and build relationships in order to do this. It's uncomfortable to talk about sometimes, but well, preacher, you're just preaching. No, 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 no. I don't often have time to share what I'm gonna share with you tonight, but no, not preached it, lived it. As a second grader, I was the first black to integrate an all white school in the South. Was that difficult? It was scary. It was scary. Some of those white kids had never been that close to somebody like me. I didn't realize how disadvantaged I was until I saw how far ahead those students were with me. I had some catching up to do. And walking around the corner one day, I heard two white female teachers talking about me saying, you can't expect too much from him because he's a black kid and he's only gonna make a certain level. So we have to start him off in the slow reading class because he won't qualify for the advance. And I went home and did what most black kids did. I told my mama. I said, mom, and I told her what I heard. And my mama looked at me in my face. She said, in, 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 in these short words, the best revenge is success. It's on you to prove them wrong. I never studied so hard because when all the kids got invited over to another kid's house, I couldn't come because back in those days, parents had a problem with blacks. When we made our trip to Washington, D.C., it was always a problem trying to figure out who was going to stay with the black guy because the parents did not want that to happen. And I studied, and I studied, and I got it. I said, I'm gonna show her. I made all A's, all quarters. I made straight A's. I made straight A's. I wanted her to know that somebody like me didn't need somebody like her to tell her I was equal. I could receive my own equality without you ever giving me confirmation of it. I was the first black quarterback in high school. 
I didn't know what they were rejoicing over. The day they put me in, at the end of the game, the score was 77 to nothing. All the black guys came and rejoiced, and like, man, you did it. I'm like, what happened? What happened? They said, don't you realize you were the first black quarterback? And I'm thinking, no, all I know is there's this girl over here waiting for me, and I got to go. <laughs> Creflo got to go. <laughs> My father experienced a lot of that. Just last week, we saw him on 2020. He's been dead for 20-something years, but he was a part of one of the policemen he was his, uh, three, the first of three black policemen in College Park, Georgia. And they dedicated a precinct to him in his name. And we looked on 2020, and there he was with his ride gear on in a place called Griffin, Georgia, because they just they hung a black man to death, and they were afraid rioting was going to go on there. The fear of in South Georgia when our car broke down and my family was in it. And my father put us all in one room because of the fear of we're going to be attacked and maybe killed and maybe not even get out. And a little boy trying to be a little strong man for my dad because it was just me and him and my sisters. Son, keep your eyes open, keep your ears up. That was traumatizing. And yet, we rise. I grew up in the ghetto in a two-bedroom duplex, five kids and parents. I was told I would never get out of the ghetto, that I was going to be just like them. That's what they said, you're going to be just like us. So it's not enough that you've got the racism coming from white people, but now your own people trying to keep you down. And yet we rise. I want you to listen to me. I, I, I got a point I want to make here. I could have spent all my life angry and mad, and it was the white man's fault. And if I have to work twice as hard or three times as hard, because it happened to me. I'm out of college. My dream is to be an NFL coach. I go to apply for my first coaching job. The head coach tells me I got, I got the job. The guy hadn't seen me yet. He said, I didn't tell him you were black, but that shouldn't be a problem. I'm walking in, just thinking I'm going to meet him and go to work. When I walked in, he was like, whoa. <laughs> and that was it. I didn't get it because I was the wrong color. I'm trying to tell you it exists. I'm trying to tell you, it, it shouldn't have taken a George Floyd video before people said, I hear you now. But I want to show you something, because this is a plan of the devil to try to divide and conquer, and it will not work. It didn't work 20 years ago. It won't work today. But he's even got a bigger reason for doing it now. He's trying to stop the unity that this revival is going to see in these last days. And, and you already see it. You don't see just blacks moving in this. You see blacks and whites and Hispanics and, and uh, the passion like never before. There's a reset that has taken place. There's a retooling that has taken place. And God is about to finally stoke the head that's involved in this racism, and we, the church, have got to be in leadership and show the world how they ought to be treating one another. We got to do it. Everybody got issues. 
Every race has an issue. You know what I learned about superiority? Superiority is something that was given to man by God so he could show his superiority over all that God made, but he was never supposed to show his and use his superiority over one another. Ref Low Dollar in this candid new series reveals how to achieve equity among all people. Don't pass up your opportunity to get the Ministry of Reconciliation three message series today for your love gift of 20 US dollars. Everything about being restored back to God revolves around Christ. If it were not for Jesus, he would not be able to restore friendship with mankind. Everybody that's born again, everybody that's saved, everybody that's had their friendship restored back to God, you have a calling on your life and you have a ministry in your life and that calling and ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. To get even more revelation, add the life-changing three-message series from condemnation to grace to your order for just 15 U.S. dollars. You can get both series for your love gift of 35 U.S. dollars today. Do you ever feel yourself slowly becoming disconnected? Maybe from family, friends, even your spiritual relationship with God. In times where it's easy to feel anxious about the unknown, Grace Life Academy is here to serve you in areas you need in your life. Welcome to living in the no lack zone. With Grace Life Academy, you will have access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and so much more. This easy to follow program offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar, where you can challenge yourself to grow in your understanding of God's grace. It's never too late to improve and develop a deeper connection to understanding God's word. And you can do that using just 15 minutes a day and joining Grace Life Academy. So what are you waiting for? Start your 30 day free trial today. Just text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online and visit mygracelifeacademy.com. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I wanna thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 